third quarter from VFL Park in the first elimination final. Rucks go at it. Madden, who spent some time on the bench so far, interchanging with Somerville. Love it. Kicks it up to where Todd Vining has taken the mark. And I think I saw Cuthbertson moving down to the forward line. Yes, he's moved. down there, Pete. Yes. John Norley has made. He tipped that at half time. Marking contest down there. Jakovic didn't come down with it. Western defence, though, has worked overtime in the first two quarters and done particularly well. And this is a man that must play well at Melbourne's to get back into the match. Yeah, he's sent half back, too, Peter. Gary Lyon kicks to left half forward. No mark taken by Spalding, but he does well to get the hand pass away the stretch. And that is a shocking kick. Might have been touched off the boot. Jakovic taken out of it by Hearn. Kevin Walsh onto Long. As I said before, the estimate defence working over time and working well. Player went down behind play with a heavy shepherd. Long still keeps going. Stops at the traffic light because there is a whistle. Yeah, ops against kick it. He was going to award a free kick, but then when Long got caught, he elected to let it go. And now he decides to go to Gary O'Donnell. Kick it, tried to pick it up, and it's ops. He gives it back to Beveridge. We've got Melbourne's only goal down that end in the first quarter. And he kicks up towards Earl Spalding. Balding from right on 50. Walsh in front. Taps the ball down. He's on Cuthbertson at the moment. Jakovic's hand pass comes out to Viney. Johnston applies the tackle. Ball spills out the back of the pack. Will he give it to Kicker? He'll try to. Eichol gets in the back. The ball's in the bottom of him. Steins breaks clear in the meantime. Almost slow motion stuff. Steins goes at goal and gets a valuable one for Melbourne. Now Jim Stein's getting his first and the defense come closer, 5-5 five, five to 7-7. Seven, seven. Yes, it's almost an indictment on your forwards when your ruckman's got to come down and run around the pack and pick up and kick a goal here. Should have been a free kick, I thought, in the first place there to Eichold. And Stein's running around, finished off very well. But Ross, wasn't that terrific? He's 6 foot 7 oh, or something and off the left foot he can still dive and That's through. why he's such an admired player. Very talented man is Jim Stein's rucking, marking and kicking. 35 plays 49. Can Melbourne get another one against the breeze? Down goes O'Brien. And White, that was a little too aggressive. Yeah, O'Brien on the field, kick. Wanganine off. And the free kick will go to uh, Craig O'Brien in the centre of the ground. He put Essendon into attack. He goes for the torpedo. It slews a little awkwardly. Steins is back there. He's working overtime at both ends of the ground. The kick back in towards the centre. Todd Viney and kick it. In comes Lovett. Handball to Eichol, a little slow, but he gets his kick. Up towards full forward, Djakovic has got the mark in front of Hurd, about 30 metres out directly in front. And Ross, this is such an important oh, kick in Melbourne, and he have any chance. Gave himself a chance, just stopped a little, stuck his backside out. Watch this, just gets his backside a little bit. Shane Hurd, because of his lack of height there, couldn't get a fist over the top to spoil. And Djakovic has kicked one. Stats kick. don't read too brilliantly, but he's got a chance to get his second, and it's a lovely kick by Djakovic, straight through the centre. So Djakovic's second goal, more importantly, is Melbourne sixth, and that's exactly what John Northey would have been looking for. At the start of the third quarter, they kicked the first two goals. Yes, and, and Steins again featuring Robbo, as you mentioned, coming off half back there. A good searching handball distribution there from Lovett. And again, we just mentioned Djakovic in front, where he must be, and so must Darren Bennett. So Melbourne supporters finally have something to cheer about. Djakovic getting his second goal. One from a mark, one from a free kick. Strong grab that one in front of Hurd, and a great start to the second half. This is Obst out of the centre. The Demons with their tails up now. Djakovic again, then he takes his second mark within a minute. Cuthbert's have got grab. But the Bombers through Considine will get clear. Maybe for just a short period of time, though, because Anderson's in front of Stretch. That was a good mark. So Anderson, who's been one of Essendon's better players, kicks it out to Madden. As I said before, has spent some time on the bench. O'Brien, Danaher, one of their better players. Was he taken high? The umpire says no. Play on. Beveridge will. Marking contest. Kick it in the front of the pack. Oh, Anderson again, gathering plenty of possessions. Onto Thompson, always consistent, over the top of Lovett, onto Long. 30 metre hand pass, that was as good as a kick, Spawn. And Watson can run in to kick his third goal, and he hit the post! Well, it was set up beautifully, Ross Glendinning had preserved it. Oh, perfect, and in fact, Road had to charge down the oncoming play, which left Watson free. But then a good chase by Tinge, just to put pressure on him. Interchange here, bit of indecision as to who's supposed to be coming off. 
and nobody does eventually. Thompson's still there. And they're having a chat on the wing. Sport in the meantime takes the mark for Essendon. Centering kick to Derek Kickett. He doesn't let them down. Now Thompson finally does come off looking back at the interchange gate. I'll tell you what, there must be something severely wrong with him because he's been playing well. So he to come off. Yeah, he's had nine and seven, Robbo. And Wanganeen comes back on. But back with Kickett. And he has kicked the ball better than that. A little bit of a nudge out there, but Gary Lyon takes the mark. Over to Rogue. 99 games in the VFL stroke AFL. Stretch and Anderson having a good duel. Anderson's beat on top there. And getting another possession. Three inside a minute. Anderson kicks towards half forward. Danaher leads out well to take the mark. Maybe too far out to score. And possibly realising that goes for the short pass. Kick it. Can just do that from there. With the wind behind him, he'll get the distance, but it's off target and through for only one behind. Ross, do you ever observe that Derek Kickett tries too many long bombs? Oh, without yeah. doubt. Yeah, his vision isn't good long distance. Certainly within a, a, a sphere around him is OK, but when he goes long, it's just very long all the time, without being specifically to a player. So Peter Road kicks in to the defensive or outer side of the ground. Steins protect his eyes from the sun there, but takes a very, very good mark. He's playing particularly well. Seven marks. Away to Yates, forced to kick quickly, goes nowhere in particular. In there is Viney, Spawn, good pressure, chance for Johnston. He's caught with the football, gets the handball away to Spawn, he's caught. Handball's further away, and it goes over for a boundary throw in. Left half forward for Essendon, and the Melbourne fans screaming for a free kick. Essendon had plenty of chances to get rid of that. Jared Healy, Mark Thompson, how is he? Yes, I think he's got a niggle on his left hamstring. He's came off, off the ground and he's in the race stretching with the doctor. I wouldn't suggest that uh, he's out of the game, but will be doubtful. Tingo to Viney to Eichold, now for Melbourne. The good shepherd. And Tingo again in that passage of play as the Demons work it forward. O'Donnell from behind, a good spoil, and he's come up with the football. Gary O'Donnell. And Michael Long. Around Bennett. Long's kick to centre wing. Madden gets one too high. Steins has come down with the mark, though. Uh, good body work. Eight mark to Jimmy Steins. Simon Madden shakes the head. Steins playing a great game. No wonder he's Brownlow favourite. Not that uh, votes will be counted today. Beverage. Ducks in. The ball comes out. Dyson off the ground. A good long kick off the carpet. And Jakovic. It's the way to go, Pete. Take the punt, get the ball on quickly. Doesn't matter how. Well, that works. And getting it quickly on, Yates takes the mark in front of Kicker. Well, Yates has been the spare man in defence for uh, Melbourne in the first half. He's down four at the moment. Copped a heavy one in that first quarter from Timmy Watson. Crucial kick for him here. Good vision by Jakovic. Pushed that forward like low trajectory. Do you uh, perceive that Melbourne have got uh, a little bit more run at this oh, yes. early part That's of the That's the only quarter? thing against, and Jared mentioned in the uh, ground report, it's quite warm out there, and that can be quite innovating for the older players. So I think uh, Melbourne's... Uh, Slightly more youthful exuberance might come to the fore. Well, they're getting more out of Jakovic for a start. But this is Yates for his first goal. <laughs> well, Simon Eichold in the preliminary final here a few years ago did a kick like that. Just to know that Gary Bacanara got the 15 metre penalty against Jimmy Steins. He virtually kicked it at right angles, just like that one. Heard. Cuthbertson stand the mark, now playing in the forward line. And the Rizard from right half back flank. Izard's long kick towards centre wing and jumping high was Madden. Tackled by Stretch, looking for the free kick but it's not to be given. Lyon, good vision, beverage marks. Just forward of the wing, oh this is critical. Oh, dropping a sitter with Steins, the free kick it was too severe yep. and Jimmy Steins will take the free kick. Essendon fans don't like it. But Ross, it looked pretty he obvious. He took him out of the contest, yes. He didn't have the footy, he just shirt front of virtually. He's got not the footy here, down he goes. Short kick, and the mark probably not taken, but certainly the ball will go to Obst right on the edge of the square. So Melbourne doing all the running in the early part of the third quarter, and it's resulted in two quick goals. Obst kick up towards 40 metres. Melbourne mark, no. Chance for Dyson. Kick smothered. Ball rebounds to Beveridge. Handball goes further back to Lovett. Went one way, then the other. Left foot kick towards full forward. High flyers wanted. Madden can't take it. Buick's caught. Spalding tackles. Buick's kick goes wide towards the half-back flank area. And it goes over in front of Stretch and Anderson for a boundary throw in. And Robbo, Melbourne's crumbing in the forward line. It hasn't been good. The ball's come to ground quickly quite often. And it's been the likes of Buick and the Essendon players that have carried away. 
So that's an area that uh, the Demons can have a really good look at. Considine caught by Beveridge. O'Brien goes to Buick. Loves to run with the footy. Short kick towards centre wing. No mark taken. Runs straight between Jimmy Steins' legs, but he goes back after him. Handballs at the centre half back. Yates mustn't fall over. He gathers the ball. Lovett has the footy in the centre. What can Brett Lovett do? Up towards centre half forward. Marking contest. Is that a mark to Walsh? No. Play on. Play on. He stole it. Forced to kick with the left. No. He goes back onto the right and kicks it wide where Spawn marks at half back. Well done from Kevin Walsh. Darren Buick. One of their good runners in the first half. But Melbourne running more early in the second and going well against the breeze, so it's shaping up as a very exciting final term. Sean White was the flyer from behind, couldn't take the mark. Stretch has it knocked away from him. The ball slapped further forward. White takes the hand pass again. Oh, he goes in really short to Spalding, who's lifted his work rate in the second half. Beveridge, a quick kick, and a short Viney. one. Top Viney, yes. Yeah, I think Johnson hold him, trying to restrict the run of Viney, then he was running onto that ball. And retarded by Johnson. Got to be a free kick. Well picked by the umpire there. Here we see this on replay. See that right hand over Viney. And he'd be kicking from right on 50. And he would need to aim with this northeasterly wind for almost the left behind post. Actually, from this side, Peter. Bit of a chance, yeah, Robbo. Yeah, one wonders, yeah. don't they, Ross, yep. whether the ball will carry with the breeze. If he can. If he pushes from left to right, he's got a fair chance. Let's see what he can do. You see how the wind takes that. Darren Bennett was taking the mark. A good play. He was on the right side oh, of the yeah, back, well, wasn't he? For the yes. blowing that way. Oh, Bennett. And you look, Darren Bennett, with the beard. Big oh. opportunity for him to make an important contribution here. But the kick, he didn't allow it all for the left to right breeze. And Bennett here, who's been very well held and has not helped himself from playing behind. Kevin Walsh, good chance to uh, redeem himself here. You can see by those stats that Walsh has done a particularly good job. Don't have any trouble with the distance. The accuracy will have to wait on and he's kicked it out of bounds. He has. Uh, he won't be too happy with that down a minute. So a free kick to Essendon in the right back pocket. You're Long. silent, Ross. Yeah, so I should be. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Long to take it. Only his second kick for the day. Eight handballs, though. Cuthbertson standing on the mark. Steins with a punch away. Good bump by Kickett. Aisha hooked or some tunnel ball. Almost effective, but he couldn't clear that very big pack of players out there. Stones again, playing the game of his life. Your Jakovic, good use of the body. And I think you like that one, Robbo. Well, more importantly, and I'm sure Ross, you'll agree, he's in front, isn't he? Have you got a chance if you're yeah. in front? And he's going to prove himself under enormous pressure there, hanging over his herd all the time. Look at that body, but that's great. Eyes on the footy, and there are players who could have come over the top, and Herd just conceded there. He's disappointed, but good play by Jakovic. So three marks, and they've all been taken in this quarter. He's kicked two goals, one from the mark, one from a free. That just goes to show, I think, how disconcerting this breeze can be. He was about to have a try at it, and then stopped, and he's gone back to have a second Plus go. he also wasn't sure where the mark was, and heard it run right back to run on onto it. He kicks a goal and gets it. So Alan Jakovic getting his third. And Melbourne fans a little bit happier. They trailed now by only three points. And exactly what John Northey would have wanted. And we heard uh, the lads on the boundary say that half-time, his forwards, particularly Bennett and Jakovic, giving a bit of a raise. Now, those two, particularly Jakovic, have come to the fore. And two goals to him in this quarter, crucial ones. I think, importantly, too, the centre bounce has become very critical now with such, such low scores. And the big boys run at each other. Steins, Eichol, Melbourne get out again. Centre half forward. Is that a mark to Spalding? It's been paid. Thought it may have been on the half volley. Now he plays on. And with that left foot, the oh. kick is smothered. Oh, this is so unbelievably crucial. That kick by Considine goes to centre half forward for Eston. Ball rebounds. White thumps it back. Chance now. Opportunity for Brett Lovett. Watson beats him to it. Well done, Watson. Handball goes to Spawn. Eston may get a goal out of it. It's a long kick by Spawn. It's a goal. And it's all come from Spawn's kick at centre half forward. And he knows it, Robbo. But Spawn gets the goal for Eston. And it's a vital one because the Demons had crawled to within three points. Now the Bombers lead again by nine. And you hear the terminology turnover. Just watch this as Lovett does the hard work and then you have Watson stealing it. 
Essen's last goal, by the way, was the 15-minute mark of the second quarter. And, gee, what a critical turnover that was. So the Bombers answer the challenge. Melbourne have kicked the first three goals in this third quarter. And Essendon get an answer through Spawn. 8-9 to 7-6. 13 minutes left. Steins gets one punch. Eichold gather Spalding. Back to Obst. Obst kick across his body is not bad. Kick it dispossessed by Eichold. Considine just gets his foot to the ball. It goes wide, goes very wide, and it's out on the full. So the free kick will be taken out there by Dyson. Right, in the last few minutes, Essen uh, dropping off, and Melbourne of the players taking the running up. Dyson's kick up towards the 50-metre line. No mark. Big punch goes back to Long. His evasive skill is brilliant. Handball is creative. Chance for Wanganui. Gets around Steins and runs with the footy in towards the centre. Kicks it to within goal scoring distance. Road, good mark, great mark. Tough, hard stuff that backing into a pack. And Peter Road never took his eyes off the footy. And all the way to Lyon. Melbourne sharing it around. Short kick finds Yates. Graham Yates, a great half back. Shot a goal in this quarter. Didn't make too much of it. This kick up towards centre wing. Steins in front, down to Wanganeen. Hills after him. Running the Shepherd. Wanganeen running the boundary. Right along. Real boundary rider. Love it in front. Spawn over the top. Two number 17. That up. That goal and gets it. TD brings up his first goal for the afternoon. The veteran 9-9 for 7-6. Yes, he's proved a handful for Melbourne. That's why they moved line from centre half forward to centre half back. He really gave well sporting the runaround. Good centering kick there by young Wanganee and Terry Danaher with Spawn going through the pack, running onto that nicely. And he's had about 16 touches for the day. Read it well. So Terry Danaher getting a very valuable goal for Eston. His first for the afternoon. Back into the centre. 48 plays 63. Madden and Steins again. One by Madden. Obst. Just outside the square. Eston players there through O'Donnell. Or was he taken low? Might have been a trip. Essendon fans looking for the free kick. None there. Ezard drags it in. And still the umpire calls play on. Long. Out to kick it. Combining well. Hills, the youngster. Up to half forward for Essendon. Melbourne got to within three points. Maybe that's as far as they're going to go. Kick off the ground. Comes down towards full forward. White goes for the boundary line. The ball will just get there, I think. Yes, it does. And so a boundary throw in. White's kick just making touch as it were. Very important 11 minutes. Oh, yes. Somerville to contest the boundary throw in. The interchange with Madden a little bit off the bench this afternoon by Kevin Sheedy. Dad, it comes to Obst again. Ball taken over the boundary by Stephen Phoebe. Gee, a game umpire could have nearly penalised him for I've that. I've seen worse, haven't oh, you? My word, I have throughout the year, Peter. He still hasn't got anywhere to go, has he? Doesn't matter, does it? He didn't try to keep the ball in much. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> Steins and Summerfield go at it again. Picked up by Lovett. Lovett's kick up towards the edge of the square. A chance for Lovell now to put Melbourne into attack. They've done better in the first part of this quarter, but Essendon have answered the challenge. Walsh, first game for the year, playing like the veteran that he is and playing well. And the kick is to the advantage of Johnston. And Obst kick was pretty ordinary by Melbourne. The kick towards half forward. Road can't mark. Pulled off the football. Through comes Gary Lyon, defending grandly. Kicks it out wide. Melbourne have got a player loose. It's Todd Viney, and he marks and runs away from Hills. One bounce, a second bounce. Hills does the chasing. Viney's kicked towards full forward. Jakovic taps it over the top. No one there? Yes, there is. Dyson taps it out. Anyone there? Bennett. Short kick by Bennett into the pocket. Spalding will mark in front of Considine. Well, not in front of Considine. Certainly over Considine. Very it's difficult it. pocket to kick from here. Yes, it is, yeah, definitely. Hear this again. Bennett uh, could have had a ping, just set Spalding up there, did that well. Good uh, run out of the back line by line. We've seen Earl Spalding have some shots at goal over his uh, yes. VFL AFL career, and I think he sprayed them from what are you here your to eyes Mildura. For? What are you shutting your eyes for? And anywhere in between, Ross. So we'll just have a look. I think the reaction of Earl Spalding will tell us. He shot for goal, and he has kicked it. Well, I must admit, I wasn't game to make a prediction there because uh, there's 
not the most reliable, but uh, a very vital kick there by the number five in the Melbourne Guernsey, Earl Spalding. He gets his first. Yes, and here Djakovic playing on rather than grabbing it, just knocking it forward. Dyson just losing the footy just slightly there, but did the right thing. Bennett then, we mentioned, good chip and Spalding. He can play and certainly does like the change from centre-half back to centre-half forward. And once again, the difference is 11 points, 54 to 63. Crowd looking for a holding the ball decision. Steins comes out with it. His kick is smothered. Wangarine off the ground. Out to the other side. Cuthbertson and Long. They both overrun the ball. Tackle applied by Obst. Long again. Quick kick around Cuthbertson. And that's out of bounds. Got a throw in. Pretty close to the centre wing position. Now that Melbourne are back in the game, Ross, uh, how important is it going to be in this last quarter with the conditions? Oh, well, the... It's been very sappy on the legs of the players. That's where Essendon, just uh, with their age, Rob, they might just uh, fall down a bit. However, their experience, on the other hand, could get on top of Melbourne. Love it and spawn the two number 17s. So Essendon working it slowly towards their goal. It's still probably 80 metres or about two kicks away. Rod Winter on the boundary. We believe injured. Madden this time wins it. Back to Obst. A short kick, not really to Melbourne's advantage. And Todd Viney has a bit of a glare at him. It's out of bounds on the floor, so certainly a wasted footy. Seven and a half, a half minutes left before three-quarter time. White punches from behind. Back to Gary Lyon. And Viney just inside the boundary line. Fans urging him to get it moving quickly. Walsh from behind does well. Beverage off the ground, but I think the ball would already cross the line, and in fact it had so a boundary throw in. A little bit... Uh, just east of centre. 19 to 9 in favour of Melbourne and the marks in the third term. And it's going to be Walsh with Darren Bennett. And they both missed it. Lovell, a quick kick and certainly a high one. About 25 metres up in the air, no mark paid. Bennett goes for the hand pass, that's effective. Finally tried to find Arshold. Just a little bit too quick for him, kick it off the ground. Gets it back to stretch. The ball doesn't bounce kindly for him either. Anderson applies a tackle. He goes down. Was he taken low? The umpire says no. Back it comes to Obst. Fans looking for a free kick long, but it gets the breeze. Good kick. Marking contest. He's out, got up high. Eichel at the bottom of the pack. Gives it back to Bennett. He'll get the distance. He shoots, but has sprayed it again. And out of bounds on the floor. And for one of the few times when they crumb the ball really well, Melbourne, they just messed that up. Stretched it well in the centre of the ground, having been dis dispossessed. Just desperately lunged to the ball to keep it in his team's favour. Long in the hands of the trainers. Got one a little bit high. Shane Hurd to bring the ball back in. I think it might have been kick it, actually. Back there in the centre. Madden goes for the football. Can't mark. Chance for Yates. Overruns it. In comes Cuthbertson. Away to Lyon. He has good vision, Gary Lyon. He looked. Saw Viney. And he's picked Viney out at centre-half forward. Todd Viney goes in towards full forward. Djakovic has got it again. Well, it was always on the cards oh, yes. that a player with this man's ability had to break loose. And the kick had to be spot on. He led right to start with, then he called for the long ball, then took off and deceived Hurd. There he goes. Hurd was looking for the long one. Got in front. He started to prop, but just got his body strength in front. Well done. Trapped that one hand. And his kicking hasn't been too bad. He's kicked three straight. And given we were critical of him in the first half, he could be a hero. Yes, well, uh, he certainly has proven the ability. He's kicked over 100 goals for the season, not in the seniors, but he kicked 60 in the reserves. And his shot for goal is offline. So you have to put the moz on him eventually. Did a good Three job, brother. Yes. <laughs> the big Jonah. 8 7 plays, 9 9. Essendon lead by 8 points. Tight game, as predicted. Heard. A good job before half time on Djakovic, who is playing better than getting more out of him in this quarter. Blocked by Kickett. Can't stop the hand pass though. Lovell. Djakovic again. He beat two, yes. Yeah. There's a bit of a nudge, but uh, are you not allowed to use your body, Robbo? Well, you're a great exponent of it, Ross, so I, I, mean, I can't be too critical. I reckon if, you, if you've built yourself up, you've got yeah. strength in your body and you can use it well. Well, the other thing is you've got to be, as an umpire, one of the hardest things to do is to watch the two players wrestling, the flight of the ball, and judge whether it's in five metres. It's a very difficult decision. Five marks this quarter, and he's now kicked four goals, Alan Djakovic. So Melbourne... 
very much in this contest. Only two points the difference now in favour of Essendon. 9-9 to 9-7. And credit to Djakovic because the, uh, he was thrown down the gauntlet by the coach to, to pull his socks up as such, perhaps in harsher terms than that. A little bit of a nudge, but Hurd didn't fall forward. He was strong enough to stand up. A good decision by the umpire. A little bit of a nudge. Well, it, it wasn't accentuated by Hurd, so he played that one all right. So the fans coming to life now at VFL Park in this third quarter. We've got under five minutes left before three-quarter time. Two points in it, and of course Melbourne will have the win in the final quarter. Cuthbertson, a hurried hand pass. White from mid-air. Hacks it up towards half forward. Now Bennett has taken the mark. He won't go for the long bomb. Might have almost kicked it, but that's history now because the play on core comes to Eichold. He kicked into the man on the mark. Dyson can't regain balance. Good tackle by Buick. Kicker tries to get it off the ground. Spalding, a high kick, not a long one. Into the forward pocket. O'Donnell no, taken out of it. Uh, Bennett has taken the mark. And what will he do this time? We won't ask you, Robert. Well, the Melbourne players really are persistent here. They're really putting themselves in and making every post to win here. Viney. And two of the Melbourne players going with the flight. Obstin Bennett, Bennett, the better hands. You going to back him this time? I think you'll kick this one. Okay. Surely he must have learnt from the previous kick. We get the distance again. About 35 metres out directly in front. And Good pass. <laughs> you beat me it, Ross. Lovell. He didn't get the distance, kicking right into the teeth of this almost a gale. It's a pretty strong northeast of it. And Essendon looking a little rattled, maybe? Just a little bit, yes. Lovell has the My chance. Word. They'll have to gather their numbers quickly, won't they? Well, a few of their playmakers have gone out of the game. Lovell for his second. A goal would put Melbourne in front. It's about for the win, maybe too much, but it's coming around. It's a goal! So Lovell gets his second. Melbourne hit the front late in the third quarter. 10-7 to 9-9. And, uh, Lovell came onto the ground in this quarter to replace Tingay. And he's certainly done a little bit of work there. That's a crucial kick. Mind you, all bit, uh, a little bit fortuitously. And they've kicked 6 2. Yes. And we've still got three and a half minutes yes. left, Ross. And they by Bennett. He didn't follow through as he normally does. It's a real toe poke. Beveridge passing over. Unselfish. Three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. We've all said that it's so critical, the third term in footy. Cuthbertson can't get out. Eichol, I reckon he's done some very, very good things at that centre bounce area. Since coming on in the second term, that kick goes close to the boundary line. And there's Simon Eichold with Michael Long. It's his body work, Robbo. He's had three and three, but it's his body work on the ground that's helped them enormously. The contest. And there's things that sometimes oh, look, just go a little under. It's unnoticed. not a stat, is it? No, that's right. But... Uh, He's a very important player. He's held in high esteem here. At, uh, that's a little high, was it, by the Essendon player spawn on Eichold? No, the umpire calls for a bounce. So with two and three-quarter minutes left, Eichold maybe letting the umpire know that it should have been a free kick. Essendon 7-2 to two in the tackles in the third quarter. Spalding and Considine. Yates for Melbourne. Up towards half forward. Lovell beaten for it by Johnston. And Johnston will turn it back for Essendon. In towards the centre. Lovett. And he stands his ground beautifully, Brett Lovett, and marks quite comfortably. Pass across centre half forward. Good interception by Long. Eichold recovers first. Kick is a shocker. And it goes close to the boundary line. Shane Hurd takes it over. But I'm sure that that win must be very, very difficult to contend with. Certainly, and perhaps even then, a harsh criticism. Perhaps he's a little too jack of his conscious. Could have gone to the square. Boundary throw in left forward pocket. Viney, he's been a good player to the goal front. No mark taken. Walsh under pressure. A way to kick it. And kick it look clear for Essendon. Derek kick it. The support from Considine. Thought about giving him the hand pass, but he was rather statuesque. Danaher couldn't take the grab. Stretch taken without it. Still a Melbourne ball. Obst, a short kick up towards the centre wing position, but there is a whistle. Yes. Stretch was slung out of it, Peter, as the ball had gone away, so the footy's got to come back. 22 free kicks to Melbourne, 17 to Essendon. A minute and a half before three-quarter time. Stretch with the free kick. And the former South Australian kicks up to Darren Bennett. Another player is looking oh, yes. isn't he? And centre breaks for about 13 to 9. Big difference. And Bennett gets underneath that one a little bit. Djakovic leading out. Hurd wearing him closely. Hurd comes down with the football. Then he gets leg. And still he does well to get a kick in. A good battle that one. Cuthbertson. He started in defence. Looks more up. comfortable up the ground, Peter. He does, doesn't he? Beveridge. And 
Essendon not looking that good at the moment. Melbourne have certainly lifted. Took six goals so far in this quarter. Clock ticking down now under a minute before three-quarter time. And I'm going to play up none down. O'Donnell has across the ground. Might be dangerous. Stretch and Anderson. A great battle right throughout the afternoon. Anderson and Yates. Did he get one high? Yates has got the football. And Graham Yates. Long kick into the pocket. Madden in front. The long arms go up. He got one on the way down too, Simon Madden. But he has the mark. Critical mark too, Pete, with what we got left there. 28 seconds. 28 seconds before three-quarter time. Izard got too far underneath the ball. Couldn't take the grab. Stein's got a hand to it. The ball kicked clear. Still outside the square. And Izard will do the tidying up work for the Bombers. Maybe more than tidying up work. He's got the break. It's got to be productive. Hills. He's got it up now. Bounces it. He'll be penalised for holding the football. Well, I don't like it. Bounce the ball and then be tackled. Straight away, a penalty against you. And that's the way the umpire sees it. And in a great third quarter, there's Kevin Sheedy. But he's got some work cut out there because Melbourne lead at three-quarter time by four points, 10-7 to 9-9. Final quarter, first elimination final from VFL Park. 67 plays 63 after a great third quarter by Melbourne when they kicked 6-2 to 2-2. And only four points the difference. A chance for Steins now with the win, Melbourne this quarter. Strong northeasterly blowing to the left forward pocket. Todd Viney with O'Donnell. Walsh. Great comeback by him, playing his first senior game for the year. Johnston over the top, Considine, a knock-on over the head of O'Brien. A chance for Robs, now it's picked up for the Bombers by O'Brien. Right on the boundary line, close to centre wing, white over the top. Knocks it down for a Gary Lyon, couldn't handle it. And a push in the back, crowd certainly looking for it. Lyon tackled, the ball spills free, and there is a whistle. And it's going to be an Essendon ball as the wrestle continues behind the play. Knock away by Yates. Danner uh, couldn't handle it. Madden. Oh, that was dangerous. He's played it too. Yeah. I think the players haven't woken up to the umpires with this kicking in danger towards the latter part of the season. Simon Madden just outside the centre square. Veteran kicks up towards full forward. But Luke Beveridge is there for Melbourne. Gives it to Peter Rowe. Demons leading by four points after they trailed by 20 at half time. Dyson through some of the new turf out here at VFL Park. A valiant attempt to mark with the ball out of bounds close to centre wing. It was a good kick by Road. Should have held on to that one. It's amazing when you make the journey yes. to get to the yep. contest house. How, then you ease up just a fraction. Yes, quite right. And you spill the ball. Eichol. Beveridge taken out of it. By his teammate. Eichol goes in again. And it's a stalemate. Gee, the centre area. Ooh. It's probably the length of the square from one end of the ground to the other. And right across the ground, the contest, who wins it, is so very important now in the first 10 minutes of this last quarter. Steins and Madden. Madden wins that one down. Beautiful ruck work to Alan Izzard, who kicks up towards uh, Werner, who was involved in a, an incident in the first quarter. Numbers were taken. It wasn't his, though, we believe. This is Andrew Obst. A little short kick, and Steins missed one. He probably could have taken Eichold. He certainly made a difference. He gives it to Obst. And Obst had plenty of time to steady. But he threw it on his boot very quickly. Johnston is caught too hard. Yes. Handball. Maybe it'll be to the advantage of Essendon. O'Donnell over the top. Anderson in the centre of the ground. He loves to run with it. Greg Anderson. Long kick. Wide to half forward. Will it sit? Watson beaten for it. White desperate. Chance for Cuthbertson. Paddles it along in front of himself. And eventually gets a kick. But he was over. As he went to put the head ball down. Rubber to kick the foot. He just put his right hand over the boundary line. Well done by Sean White to knock that ball forward. Good defensive work. Terrific, desperate stuff, wasn't yes, it? What finals word. are made of. And both of these sides playing for their 1991 season. The winner goes on. The loser goes out. Madden. He's striving hard for his team. Centre half forward. White a good punch. Back it goes to Anderson. He's pulled off the football. Desperate stuff by Obst. He's got it underneath. But the umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt. And he will bounce it. Obst and O'Brien. O'Brien not happy. And umpire Sheehan taking none of that. Only he'll bounce the ball just forward of the wing in Essendon's half. Free kick, maybe? No. Oh, Boys yeah. are having a bit of a dust up off the footy. Got it behind the umpire. I don't think you have much of a chance of seeing that. Somerville taps it down. Kick off the ground by Lyon. Steins this time. Is that a mark? Crowd certainly didn't think so. Steins decides to play on. Played a great game. He kept Melbourne in it in the first half. 
Dyson gives away the hand pass. And the end of it is Stephen Stretch. Stretch down inside 50. Walsh and Bennett. Here's a chance for Johnston. And rebounds to Walsh again. Was he taken too high by Lovell? That pass oh, is oh, the ball. Dear me. Well, you don't agree, Ross. The, what hand, the hands were actually initially around the chest area as he went down. They slipped up. Here we go. Started. The right hand was high, perhaps, but he's on the blind side. But you're penalised if you don't make any attempt to get rid of it when you tackle. Did he have any chance? No, should have been play on. Lovell has kicked two goals, and with the breeze behind him, should be able to kick the distance. What was off the boot, but it's straight. It's his third goal. Melbourne go further ahead. So Lovell gets his third, and Melbourne's 11. 11-7 11 to 9-9. Well, I'm sure some of the Melbourne supporters will say, well, we needed a couple in front of goals. Essen had a couple paid earlier on. It, watch this again. From where the umpire was, from behind those two players, they couldn't have seen that right hand, but he still had control of the ball as the tackle went down. So, pretty stiff, Robbo. It was a good kick by Andy Lovell in the finish for his third goal, and he's made a good contribution. Melbourne lead by 10 points. Vital win here in the centre. Anderson... Up towards half forward. Melbourne have got the numbers. Wanganeen. Eichold's got him. Handball. Ball goes free to love it. Melbourne up towards centre half forward once again. At the back. Viney. Can't mark. Back goes Madden. O'Donnell trying very hard. Kicks loose off the side of his boot. And it rebounds to Wanganeen. Short kick. Sits up. White marks on centre wing. And Melbourne seem to have all the answers at this stage. That kick slews off the side, oh. but fortunately lands with stretch. And isn't that funny how it happens oh, yes. when, when it's right. going for you? Yep. It just keeps Runs going your way. Stretch's lovely long kick is a bomb to the goal square. And it's helped through by Johnston for a behind to Melbourne. So another rush behind to the Demons. It just gives them that little bit more space. 11 points, Robbo. 74 to 63 is heard. Kicks into this near side. It's short. Eichol can't mark. Melbourne with the numbers again. Dyson takes from Lovell. Back to Obst. Very clever. Left foot kick by Obst is a behind. Melbourne surging home. The younger legs is Earl Spaulding. And the fans here have been engrossed for most of the afternoon. It's been a terrific tussle. Essendon getting away to a great start. 5-6 to 1-2 at quarter time. And Melbourne slowly pegging them back. Yes, Essendon only kicking two goals since half time. Anderson, Walsh. Walsh kicks towards the outer side. And over the boundary line, throw it on centre wing. Well, I was critical of Melbourne's crumbing in the forward line the first half. And so this quarter particularly, the latter half of the third and this start of the last, they've been so much better. Madden and Danaher with Steins. The ball doesn't come in very far at all. Over to Spawn. Kicked a goal for the Bombers in the third quarter. Yes, it is. A free kick to go to Melbourne through the agency of Sean White. And he decides to play on. Very close to the boundary line again, but a good mark taken by Todd Viney. He's played well, Pete. His third quarter was terrific. Yeah, the whole side lifted after the uh, the half-time break. And there is another whistle, a push-out. It's all happening, isn't it, for yes. the Demons? Falling into place, you might say. It just shows you if every line's prepared to pay off Every play on each line is prepared to play in front. Give yourself a chance. Spalding, who has kicked one goal. Marking contest. Anderson and Eichold. And Hills. Eichold has the ball underneath him. He'll have to get rid of that pretty quickly. Umpire says play on. Cuthbertson. Who's that guy? High, wide and not too handsome. And out of bounds on the full. 46,032 here at VFL Park today for the first elimination final. Johnston the leads upfield. Not too much on offer. He'll just go long. In it. Almost runs into his teammate there in Earl Sporting. Centering kick. Oh, he didn't do that too well at all. But it was intended for Jimmy Steins. Perfect. And Essendon suddenly on the break. They could get a little bit cocky. O'Brien, out to Long. Essendon only two goals down. Not going to work this time, Mark. Stephen Stephen. Mark. 
taken by Phoebe and it's in the half back. Because he watched the, the footy, that's why. He kept his eye on the footy, not his opponent. Love it. To love it. Love it with the right half back flank. Dwyer Holden played a great third quarter. On to Dyson. Former VFA player. Dyson in towards Jakovic, who couldn't take the mark on that occasion. He had a great third quarter. Off the ground. Goal coming from Beveridge. It's his second. Luke Beveridge kicked Melbourne's first and he might have kicked the winning goal. 12-9 to 9-9 at BFL Park. And that's not quite so much up front, but it's the preparedness of the forward, the small blows to run on. Perhaps a little bit of backside involved there. However, he took the punt, he ran onto it. Viney was there to assist to watch Viney just in the foreground there run through. It could have been a pickup and a handball to Viney. Still a goal, but they all count. And the Demons now, they kick away to lead by 18 points. We've got 16 and three quarter minutes left. Very vital centre bounces. Anderson gets it away. They've broken down across half forward, the Bombers, and they will again. Lyon, a long kick, wide to half forward. No mark taken. Lovell's there, handball over the top, looking for Dyson. Tap on goes to Spawn. Spawn's kick, back towards half forward. No one home for Mel oh, Essendon again. And Lyon marks, he's controlling that half-back line beautifully now, Gary Lyon. I think the Demons can sense victory. We've got a fair way to go before the final siren, but uh, they look pretty comfortable. Short kick by Obst, looks for Eichol. He's beaten for it, two on one. In the finish, a poor kick by Obst. Now a chance is for Hills. Hills kick back in towards the centre. Love it. Yates shrugs the tackle. Must get rid of it. He does. Essendon a chance now, Considine, sweeping hand pass, Beveridge is there, what a great goal he kicked just a minute ago, Good and he's kick. backed up by getting back across that half back line, Obst goes to Cuthbertson, and the Demons are out of trouble, Cuthbertson's kick, the centre wing, Dyson's tackle on Hills is good, still left to boot for the Demons, and Dyson well done, brilliant football Kevin Dyson, you can get up and feel pretty satisfied with that little effort as Simon Eichold goes and taps the young man on the back. Congratulations. Boundary throw in. Steins gets it to Eichold. Eichold's kick. Just a little bit off the side of his boot, but fortuitously, it finishes with Lovett. Short kick. The lead is by Jakovic. The kick goes over the back. Danaher. And he gives away a behind. And if ever, you can see the ageing legs in that little contest there where Terry didn't really try to keep it in. Yes, he's been shifted to centre-half back to pick up Spalding with Considine going to centre-half forward. Might be a very valuable behind that one. Three goals won the difference now. Spawn. Eastman still only two goals in half-time. Michael Long. Another Derek Kickett. To Anderson. One of their most consistent players. That's a good mark taken by Yates. Under Cuthbertson. He's played at both ends of the field today. Now back in defence onto Dyson. He's really lifted after half time, but then again, the whole Melbourne side has up the, break, the uh, after the main break. And particularly, perhaps this fellow, Alan Jakovic. He was markless before half time, and he's now taken six and kicked four goals. Four goals, one, I think, isn't it, Robbo? He's uh, tally so far. Yes, Peter. So for kick number eight, with the breeze behind him, right on 50. Distance shouldn't be a problem. It's not. He split the centre. It's a goal. So Djekovic gets his fifth, and the Demons, you would think, are almost home. 13 10 to 9 9. It's a Graham Rach. You backed yourself there on the half back line for the mark from behind. But from there on in, you had runners coming through midfield, and you created that lead for Djekovic. And the disposal was good, and the finish was even better. Across for a player who uh, struggled early. He's, he's That's what happens, though, Robbo. That's exactly what happens. Terrific it's a stuff. good sign. It's a good yep. sign. Yep. So the Bombers may be close to being eliminated in the first week of the finals. Steins, Izard has it knocked away by Beveridge, but it's still a Bomber ball. Kick it now has it. The hand passes quickly, or quickly done and effectively onto O'Brien. A wobbly one to half forward. Weight being used in the packs and coming away for the Demons is Phoebe. A wobbly punt knocked away by O'Donnell. The backing up well is Todd Viney. Onto Beveridge. Beveridge to half forward. And Djakovic again finding space, and you would have to say within kicking distance, 
He could have got it moving a little bit quicker, perhaps. He's turned it back on the play. I think he might have sensed the sixth goal coming up. I think he's reasonably confident <laughs> he might kick that one. <laughs> but again, it was yeah. the, their run and their contest, and the ball just favoring them with the bounce, particularly on that wing coming back to near the Viney contest. They're just running free. For number six. Directly in front. Breeze behind him again, right on 50. He likes it. It's a goal. Alan Jakovic, goal number six, and the Demons go further ahead, 14-10 to 9-9. I was just looking back at Gary Lyon before, and I looked at his record over the finals. In 87, he broke his leg in the last time and away, missed the finals. 88, played all four. Then 89, he missed the end of the home and away, and they had two finals there, so he didn't play. And then 99, he missed the first one. And after training with the uh, colliding and training with Steve O'Dwyer, so it's great to see the skipper controlling halfback and having a, a say in this final today. Well, six goals. That's a uh, match-winning performance by Alan Jakovic now. What he was goalless, Peter, in the first half, did you say? I think Only he had, had one kick. One from the free kick. One from a free kick. So in the second half, five goals in a uh, fairly well low-scoring game, 14 to 9. Lovett is beaten for it by Wanganin. He's still got the football underneath Wanganin, and he's going to be penalised. Well, I suppose if they're consistent. And Essen haven't scored since the 16-minute mark of the third quarter. Yes, it was a bad sign in that third term when Melbourne kicked six goals to two against the Breeze. Love it now from half-back. Gets good distance with the kick. But Terry Danner takes a good mark. Gets the handball away to O'Donnell. O'Donnell tucks it under the left. And then runs. Forced to kick now. Up towards half-forward. But line. Geez, controlled it beautifully. That half-back line. Wide kick. Oh, good play by Rode. Now a chance for Dyson. Short kick is wide, too wide by Kevin Dyson. Perhaps just look, took one stride too many. And a bit more pressure, yes. To kick the footy. And in the finish, kicked it out on the full. The free kick to Hurd in the back pocket. Kick holds up a little in the breeze. The high flyer, the big man. Geez, a good player, Steins. He doesn't win the Brownlow. Tenth mark. Long left foot kick. Mark taken back there by Considine. Plays on quickly. Left foot kick high. Looking for Walsh. Chipping in. Stretch. No. Spawn takes it away. Spawn's kick wide. Anderson and Obst. Obst has done a pretty good job since try tagging the bloke in the second half. Love it and Wanganin. The matchups for Melbourne in the second half have been excellent. Love it. Tripped by Wanganin. Takes the free. Away to Yates. Yates having a good look upfield. Left foot kick by that player. Bennett. Can't mark. Ball to the back. Free kick. It's going to Melbourne to be taken by Beverage. Beverage. Beverage wide of centre half forward. Kicks it into the pocket. Terry Danaher gets back. The lead by Jakovic. Shrugs the tackle. This is going to be a miracle goal if he kicks this. Just goes across the face. And through for his second behind. Six goals, two to Alan Jakovic. And Melbourne lead 14-11 to 9-9. We saw Essendon against the West Coast Eagles. In fact, we all did that game, I think, from memory, and they faded out there after half-time. It's been a similar story today, hasn't it? Danaher kicks in. They're well in the contest there up until the main break. And the same here when they led by 20 points. Shane Hurd's been moved away from full-back. Considine coming out to pick up Jakovic. So boundary throw in with 10 and a half minutes left in this quarter. 42 to 24. Anderson onto Johnston. Johnston from centre half back and Brett Lovett getting underneath the ball for a safe mark. Melbourne playing with a lot of confidence now. Spalding from centre field just on the circle. Not a contest. Good mark to Danaher. 303 VFL AFL games. Nesbitt, of course, badly missing his brother who badly injured a knee midway through the season. Heard. Upfield from fullback, as we just mentioned. Certainly ran his full distance. Centering kick. Umpire has paid the mark to Wanganine. Maybe too far out to score. Kick number eight for Wanganine. Hit a space at full forward. Over the head of Werner. If he can gather it quickly, he should get a goal, and he has done. Werner putting through his third. So three goals to Werner. A little bit too late, though, for Essendon. Their first goal, and in fact, their first score for the quarter. Essendon come up to 10-9. Yes, and whilst it's not impossible, I think it's going to be so difficult for Essendon to come back in the game from here. And a good reading of the ball there from Essendon, from Werner. Got a good bounce. 
but they certainly look shot at the moment. A lot of their players with socks down, looking very tired. Sixty-nine to ninety-five, twenty-six points the difference under ten minutes remaining in the elimination final. Down goes Somerville, along goes Anderson. The umpire says he can play on, and he does. Likewise, he too runs his full distance, kicks it up towards full forward. Werner, can he kick two inside a minute and keep the Bombers in the game? He has done. He's got four goals. Well, the Bombers not going down without a fight. 14-11 to 11-9. Yes, again, this, today's footy, the game has moved very quickly. I still can't see them really coming back here. The advantage paid Anderson, looked around the umpire, got it on quickly and Werner just finished off. Just got in front there quite easily of Phoebe and just dribbled that ball through. Did Next set of well. bounce, sorry. That wasn't a bad kick then by Werner. effort, yeah, kept it low. Peter Dacos special. Yes, I think that was uh, intelligently done by Michael Werner. He's uh, done well from just a few chances that he's had four goals too. Well, 20 points, Ross, with nine minutes left. Can they get up? I don't think so. These are Steins. Now, I guess that uh, if Melbourne wanted to go a bit defensive, you can use seconds up by bashing the ball over the boundary line and all that sort of stuff, I think they're you? still their best method of defence is to keep attacking. They're keep playing attack. their better footy. Their, fail, their players have got better legs. Keep moving the ball forward. So another bounce. Big punch by Obst. Chance for Spawn. Dispossessed by Viney. Oh, Long missed it. Should have got it. Dyson goes back. Lovell. Kick smothered. Still a chance. Eyeshield off the ground. O'Donnell marks it. Plays on. Essendon have summed it up. We must play on at every possible chance. Mark to Madden, just wide of the centre. Handball's on. Watson leaves it behind. Goes after it again. They need lift from the big stars. Anderson. They get another goal quickly at our lift. Up towards full forward. And Phoebe drops what he should have taken. Love it, handball. Yates under pressure. Must kick quickly. No, he handballs. Rowe. Back in towards the centre. Ops, what a great bar had the sit. Plays on quickly. Eyeshall. Up towards full forward. Oh, Considine dropped what he should have taken. Off the ground. He may get worried out of it by Jakovic. No, it goes over for a boundary throw in. Jakovic looking for the free kick. But I don't think the umpire will be paying any of those. Now, Alan, let's not do anything silly because you look as though you may get a game again next week. I think he's talking in Slav though, Robert. It's okay. Does that mean you can't understand it? Boundary throw in. Bennett. Kick by Dyson. Goes out on the full. Free kick to Essendon to be taken in the back pocket by Considine. We're down under eight minutes. Seven and a half minutes left. And Melbourne lead by 20 points. Considine to take the free kick. kick number 13 for him. Now playing at full back on Alan Jakovic. Shane Hur beat him well in the first half. Things different in the second. Steins, a big punch away. Beveridge and Spawn clash the ball over the boundary line, but this is suiting Melbourne. They won't be too worried about that as the clock ticks down just on seven minutes remaining in the match. John Sell there, the Melbourne football manager, on the phone. I understand has resigned. Eichold, what a difference he's made, especially around midfield in the second half. And again, Melbourne trying to close it up. They're doing it pretty well. Suiting them right down to the ground. Jakovic almost. Yes, I think Jakovic a mark. So he could finish up with his seventh goal because he's directly in front and as you can see there, only about 15 metres out from goal. Just so important too for Melbourne's uh, next game, assuming they will win today, that he fires and he's certainly in this second half has shown his, his quality. That's a very good mark. He's kicked six goals, two. two. Six, two? Six, two. Now kick seven goals too. Seven goals to Alan Jakovic, and that will sew it up for Melbourne in the elimination final. 15-11 to 11-9. And that sort of accuracy at 7-2 coming to this game, he kicked 59-55 for the season. So his uh, ratio of conversion is not as good as it could have been. Not unlike Peter Sumich, perhaps. But today, good quality from the spearhead. As we mentioned on a number of occasions, it was very well held in the first quarter and a bit. Seven goals, two to Alan Jakovic. Essendon only four goals from half-time and 11 goals to Melbourne after the main break. Somerville and Steins. Steins kept Melbourne in it in the first half. Dyson has taken the grab. 
Pete, just talking about uh, Djakovic there, how much of uh, SMS Salmon as a spearhead? Whilst Werner's kicked four, they just need someone else down there attack to kick to. How much have they missed Anthony Danner, who at full back? Walsh, who's done well in his first senior game for the year. But the numbers have been Melbourne's way, and that's continuing. Arshold in towards full forward, and a mark taken by Lovell. He has a pot shot and puts it through for his fourth. And a wrestle behind play. It's Dyson, and I think long. Yes, it is. 16-11 to 11-9. Yes, and Lovell with 16 and 3, 16 kicks, 3 handballs, and those four goals. He's mopped up very well. He's kicked one in the second, one in the third, two in this last. A very, very important contribution from the player coming into the side. And Ross, uh, it's imperative now that Melbourne don't do any silly things in the oh, last five right, minutes, yeah. isn't it? I mean, if they've got the game one, just watching Michael Long try and bait a few players there. Just let it go. They get sucked in, well, it'll be let it very go. bad news, won't it? Quite right. 32 points now, Melbourne's lead. And they trailed at half time by 20 points. So it's been an enormous turnaround. Steins has been quite magnificent for the Demons. Dyson has done pretty well since coming on as well. He's had 11 kicks and 7 hand passes. And Eichold, who was the other player who started on the interchange bench, has had 14 very important possessions as well and 3 tackles. So the Demons getting a little bit out of it of everybody haven't they it's been a pretty even team performance led by the champion ruckman ball goes wide towards the uh, center wing chipping in now is o'brien looking to get around onto his right foot now he does and kicks it towards full forward white and madden madden can't mark werner can get another one no the kick is a bit of an up and under ops gets under it and marks it may not have gone the required distance it certainly did up in the air and it's not paid Phoebe to stretch. He's out underneath it and takes a good mark. Yates a little late. He's out is uh, probably three kicks from goal. The breeze is blowing straight into his face out there on that uh, right half forward flank position. His short passes to Somerville. Somerville too far out to score against the wind. Four minutes left in the uh, in the match. Kicks into the pocket, white over the top. Lovell. Cuthbertson. He's played forward and defence today. He's kicked towards the centre wing position. Todd Viney. Long kick to no one in particular. I think he picked out our cameraman down there. We hit him on the head. Just wondering what's going through the minds of uh, Terry Danher, Tim Watson, Simon Madden. The last very game, Ross, is that... Uh, well, I'm not saying they, they should, but I think if I was in their shoes, I'd think very seriously about it. Terry Danaher, we understand, will be playing next year. Missed, of course, the first half of this year through suspension. Alan Izard. Izard from midfield. Players just going through the motions now. O'Brien. Three and a half minutes left in the match. Madden. Lopes after it. Ball socket well clear, though, by Sean White. And that's the difference, isn't it, Ross? The uh, athletic, well, fairly quick in the legs. Sean White yes. just running right away yeah. from Simon there. He's going to be able to pick them up and put them down, take those hard yards in this last quarter and a bit in such a tense game is so very important. 32 points the difference. O'Brien, a knock-on. Anderson, been a very constructive player for Essendon, probably one of their best, if not the best. Madden and Lovett. And Madden with the left foot. His main kicking foot has kicked it out of bounds on the floor. So a free kick to Melbourne in the right back pocket. Just about sums up Essendon's goal-kicking fortunes, doesn't it, in the last, uh, well, two quarters. Haven't had too much going for them up front. Somerville takes the mark. Started on the bench today. His fifth mark for the afternoon. So Melbourne will advance after today's encounter. And it will be mothballs for the Bombers for season 1991. Somerville against the breeze, draws it round well, won't quite make the distance, marking contest in front, and Melbourne content to try to hold it up again, O'Donnell has a shot, and he has not scored it out of it. Yes, the last rights for Essendon for season 1991 here at VFL Park, Gary O'Donnell who's been a uh, great trier for his team, the kick in to be done by Stephen Phoebe in the back pocket for Melbourne. Just one and three quarter minutes left. Somerville edges out. Jimmy Steins. Steins will take the free kick in the back pocket. He's had 17 kicks 
six hand passes, 13 hit outs, and a goal. And, and that 10 has been, marks. And 10 marks, <laughs> and that's been his whole season, hasn't oh. it, Ross? And if he hasn't got those stats, you've almost rated him as being an ordinary player, which yeah. is wrong, but uh, it's just the quality of the fellow. Yes, I must say that he's been beaten at centre bounces, I feel. But uh, when the ball's hit the ground, he's been very good with his body and uh, just getting in there to help make paths. He's up. Uh, Yates chips in. And he gets his kick away. Steins again. Gets a hand pass. Road. Viney. Short kick. Safety of the band Because when you compare it to other Ruckman, Robert, they might win the taps. They might not necessarily take the same number of marks or get the same number of possessions. So it all equals itself out. And the boys are just getting a little bit heated. But I'm sure that uh, the Melbourne players now, Todd Viney getting into it with Wanganeen. Play goes on. Road. Left foot kick goes nowhere in particular. Still Obst and Wanganeen. And a free kick is going to Melbourne. And the runner better get out there quickly for Melbourne. Necessarily for Essendon because their season is uh, well and truly over in about half a minute as they make another change. The Demons. Winter comes onto the ground. And the kick goes wide to half forward. It's between centre half forward and the centre. Love it, Marks. Kick goes in towards full forward. Jakovic stops, runs on, handballs to himself. Still got the footy held, but he didn't have it, according to the umpire. And Jakovic has a chance to kick eight goals in a final. He about the last kick of the day, too, Robbo. Well, this would have to be a, uh, a record at this stage because it's the first time that uh, we've had a final involving fifth and sixth. So, Jakovic, whatever he sets, the siren is sounded. So, the difference at the moment is 32 points in favour of Melbourne. Jakovic from 45 metres. Beautiful kick. Oh, it's a goal. Well, and Jakovic finishes the day with eight goals, and Melbourne run out in the end. Pretty convincing winners after they trailed at half time by 20 points and in quarter time by 28. The final scores 17 11, 113, defeating the Bombers 11 9, 75.